All right, so in this video, I have a new pair of Hoka sneakers that released a bit ago, and I finally got a pair to try. And it is a, a really sleek overhaul for a pair of sneakers that was pretty much the max cushion king, I think, depending on who you would ask. So this is the eighth version, and you could see it's completely redone uh, from the previous versions. The midsole is absolutely ridiculously massive, and it has a really cool different look to the shoe. They made it a lot more sleek for a really big chunky shoe. Uh, there's some things that I really really like but there are some things that I don't like about this shoe as well And uh, so let's go and get in the video The Bonnie 8 is $165 and they do feature regular wide and extra wide versions of the shoe and I'll link them in the description if you guys are interested in purchasing. A little bit about the shoe, it says the Ultra Cushion Game Changer, one of the hardest working shoes in the Hoka lineup. The Bonnie takes a bold step forward this season, reworked with a softer, lighter foam and a brand new extended heel geometry. Taking on a billowed effect, the rear crash pad affords an incredibly soft and balanced ride from heel strike to forefoot transaction. It says these are best for everyday running, walking and comfort features engineered mesh construction, recycled content lining mesh, ortholite hybrid sock liner, lightweight, a resilient foam, and a zonal rubber placement for weight savings. It's vegan and partially gusseted tongue, heel pull tab, and durable rubber outsole. They say that this is a neutral stability sneaker and that it is very plush on the cushioning end. So this is like the biggest stack for what they offer. Now my personal preference for Hoka is the Clifton series. I'm waiting for a newer version of these, uh, but until then I wanted to get the Bondies to try them out. The Cliftons in my opinion are the best like all around comfort shoe from Hoka that I've tried. I've tried maybe five or six different versions, uh, but this is the one that I really like. If you guys have a favorite, leave a comment in the comment section. This new revised version say it's lighter. So first of all, I wanna check the weight. We're looking at 11.5 ounces versus the Clifton 8 that's 9.4 ounces. So obviously a little bit lighter there. And then for comparative purposes, we have these guys here the New Balance Fresh Foam More V4, and those are 10.9. So 11.6 versus 10.9, these are a little bit lighter than these. It's definitely a lightweight shoe though, considering how ridiculous the foam is. I mean, literally the entire thing is a lightweight foam. Hoka says that the foam is softer. I have a Shore a durometer here, and I wanna just test it and see. It says it's about a, roughly a 38 for the foam, and then on the old pair here, in. Maybe it's the same as on this one. It says it's a 40, 38, 40 roughly in between there. So it's kind of on the firmer end of sneaker cushioning if you ask me. Like the Fresh Foam X is actually softer. This is like a 35, 36, at least from what my reader shows. So the Fresh Foam X is softer than what the Bondi offers. Now my initial impressions of the shoe is again, I, I thought it looked beefy and I like that it's like a revamped version of what I have seen in the past because the other versions I just thought it was too chunky. Uh, but this is chunky, but also done in a nice sleek overhaul. I mean, really New Balance and uh, Hoka are really like the kings of this. And both of these look really incredible. And I love the fact that both of these have been completely revamped. Is it super comfortable though? I mean, obviously there's a huge max stack of cushioning here, but I had one fundamental issue that I had from first trying these on that I just, I couldn't get past it. And maybe it's just my feet. Maybe it's just this exact pair. Maybe I just need a wider version, but I had this problem where the heel on this side of the shoe right here, when I put the, the shoe on the heel, it digs into my my um, the bottom of my foot. And I'm like, why is this digging in? It feels like it's cupped like this and it feels like my foot's landing on the top of the cup instead of being inside of the cup. And because of that, like the comfort of the shoe is greatly impacted. So I feel like maybe I just need a wider version of the shoe. Maybe I should return in and try to get a wide, but I, I don't know. I don't know if it's wider in the heel or wider in the forefoot. You don't need it wider in the forefoot. I just needed a little bit extra room in the heel, but that was kind of a bummer. That being said, if that wasn't an issue and it did fit in, like the forefoot squish is there, the heel tone transition is really nice, and the cushioning of the shoe is maximum, obviously, based on the look of the shoe and just the stack of the, the foam that they have. So comfort rating minus that one issue that I had, I mean, I'd give it a 7.8. Uh, if that wasn't an issue, it might be higher. Yes, it's wide foot friendly. They have two different versions of uh, these for wider feet. So that's a big plus for us people 
uh, with the wide feet gang. Breathability, I would say, is pretty much the same as the other Hoka's, and basically any one that has engineered mesh on the upper, it's like a seven and a half out of 10. It's average for sure, but it's not bad. It's, it's I mean, it's there for a reason. Obviously, ground feel, you don't have too much because it is a max cushion shoe. The stability rating is actually pretty surprising. I gave it maybe a 7.8 again. It's very wide, and because of the width of the shoe and just the overall foam density, it's surprisingly very stable. Traction felt okay on here. If you've had Hoka's in the past, it doesn't seem like it's anything new to the Hoka space. Uh, same sort of rubber that you get like on the, the Clifton's and whatnot. So nice and soft and sticky. I think that Saucony probably has the best rubber on some of the running shoes that I've seen. It's a lot firmer and stickier. This is like softer and stickier, but it definitely is not bad. Durability, if you guys want to leave a comment and let other people know like how durable the shoe has been for you. For us casual folks, like how many weeks or months or have you actually been wearing the shoe like day in and day out and has it like had any wear issues or not. I don't think that this is gonna be anything out of the ordinary though. Like it seems like it's gonna be fairly durable, just an average pair of Hoka's, which is exactly what it is. And the aesthetic rating, I'd give it like a seven out of 10. I do like that it's an upgraded version. I love the waves on the sides of the shoe. In hand, it's still really big and chunky. Like a, a smaller version would be kind of cool to see as well. Like again, I would love to see a Clifton version of this with this crazy midsole. Like I'm waiting for something like that. That would be rad. But uh, in the meantime, I mean, this is Max Cushion World. And so this is going to look very massive comparison to the sleeker version of like the, the, the Clifton's. I'll have a different video comparing like my top five Max Cushion sneakers. These two are probably both in the top five uh, just because they are tried and true for what they've been in the last handful of versions. If I had to give you guys a verdict on which one I would personally prefer out of these two, hands down the New Balance uh, Fresh Foam More V4. It's more soft on feet, very stable. I love the look of this one better. It's a little bit lighter as well. Overall, everything about this shoe I like better than this version. And the Hoka, again, because of that weird heel issue that I had, um, not as comfortable for me as uh, the more before's. And if you guys are interested in buying either of these shoes, I will link them uh, in the description, as well as the Clifton's, um, because that's my favorite. Honestly, I would still probably choose the Clifton 8 over this shoe. And I know this is not the Max Cushion, this is the Max Cushion, but I like this better than the previous version of the Bondi. Uh, with the look of the shoe, but I still like the Clifton 8s over the Bondies. It's just kind of my personal preference of what uh, Hoka offers. But have you guys tried these? Is it something that you guys like or not? I think that they're offering something really, really good here. Obviously, they have uh, a purpose for people that need the Max Cushion shoes, and hopefully I'll be able to have that issue resolved. I'll follow up in the comments if I do have this issue resolved, but I need to just go in and try on another pair and see if they're uncomfortable or not. Uh, maybe it's just this pair, but man, you can feel the reinforcement right be behind this collar too right here and it feels like a little bit of plastic reinforcement here that i'm sitting on top of it's just not a comfortable uh vibe there but other than that i mean the shoe would have been great it probably would have been rated a little bit higher than what i've given the kudos to for the shoe and hopefully i'll have a follow-up again but leave a comment in the comment section if you guys have tried these or not uh, if it's something you guys are interested in again check the links in the description and it was something i was really excited to get kind of bummed with my experience but at the end of the day i do know what hoko delivers and this shoe again feels like really good for some reason this one feels off and it feels honestly like a replica like that's how crazy it is it feels like a replica pair of sneakers where just something's a little bit off on the build quality of the shoe so i definitely need to, to get it checked out but appreciate y'all for stopping by and watching hope you guys like the video and hopefully we'll see you back for some more uh, random sneaker content soon all right peace guys